When it comes to maps in Valorant, there's definitely this butterfly effect when designing the spaces. We might make a change on the A site that makes it a little bit easier or harder to defend. And as a result, that actually changes how defenders allocate throughout the entire map. Breeze was the first post-launch map that we put together on Valorant. All the other maps prior to that, we had built in-house before we had gotten a chance to see how players were interacting with the game, how they were um, using agents and all the weapons and how they were strategizing. Everyone was immediately excited about going from boxy, cold icebox to tropical island. Players had experienced our game. They had feedback. They had feelings and thoughts about you know the directions they wanted to see new maps go. Um, and one thing we consistently heard across regions and skill levels was larger spaces um, and more open, longer sight lines. So with Breeze, we were able to take a look at how the community was playing, the types of things that they were asking for on maps, and we tried to deliver that on Breeze. I actually jumped right into the, the 3D gray boxing. Here's a big square. That's mid. Like, that's all it is. Here's another big square. That's A site. Cool. Um, and then you start, like, shifting things around and refining and get closer and closer. I think in one weekend or a few days, I think I actually had a first pass of the entire map. I mean, it changed a bunch from there, but just getting a quick skeleton of the map down was very helpful for building excitement about the map and the idea and, like, Actually, I think this could work. I think there's something really interesting here. We actually had an old prototype map that uh, had a pyramid on it. And we ended up you know, trashing that map. But uh, the pyramid was actually had some really cool gameplay around it that we were enjoying. For a site, it's like two pyramids are better than one. Like drop them in a giant square and like see, see what happens. And as the site kind of shifted around again, like the size got reduced, cover shifted, that, that half wall that's, you know, in between double doors and the pyramids, the, the wood doors used to not exist. So you had this like super long head peak fight all the way to mid crates or mid stack. But like the pyramids never really changed. They were just kind of this constant that had great gameplay from the get go. And we just stuck with it. Everything is interconnected in a sense where a change on A probably affects how things on mid play and a change on mid changes how things on B play. So a lot of what we were doing throughout the play testing and, and refinement process was really trying to understand exactly what type of role we want each site and mid to play. So there's a bunch of decisions like that that went in over time, but the overall structure actually stayed pretty similar. Typically the pattern is that we'll reduce the size of our map over time. And that's as a result of just iterating and getting feedback from our play tests. But on this map, there was a, a conversation where we were just very conscious of, let's try to basically hold the line as much as we can on some of these elements of the map with the long sight lines. A site really delivers on kind of all of the premise of the map. So you just see all of the, the big space and sight lines just kind of all right there. Early on, we have this stage called blue sky phase. And that phase is basically once we've kind of made that creative decision, like we generally want to go in this direction, we kind of like let the concept artists go crazy on what's what's the best, craziest version of this. We tend to slowly reel that in as we start executing on it in the map. Our team receives what they consider a final gray box from design. At that point, it's our turn to start realizing that gray box. Because of the new space, the new narrative, the new lore, the new location that we're going to, it's more fun to work on those types of environments where you, you have lots of foliage popping out of the cracks of the corners where a wall meets a, a ground and corrugated metal plates that we have everywhere, that drippy, rusty, grungy stuff. It's really fun to do uh, as an environment artist because you have the ability to add detail and you have the ability to put storytelling in the environment. The story spaces are something that we, that is a little bit of an evolution of what we've done on the art side. We've always looked for those. Those are always our, our spaces that we know there's going to be not a lot of fighting, not a lot of like readability issues where we can kind of push things a little bit further and tell some story. The A site Breeze is a great example where it's kind of up and out of the way. We can like really go ham with detail. We can 
add more lighting, we can add effects, all sorts of things that are kind of out of the, the normal play space area, but players can still actually see it if they look for it in the environment. A lot of times those specific IP lore elements to the map, they come in pretty late in the uh, art production process. It's also a little bit challenging from a creative standpoint to look at a gray box, gray, gray cubed out map and be like, ah, over here, I want to put, for example, in the chop shop, that mine shaft, that elevator shaft wasn't there when I first built out that room, nor was that piece of radionite, that glowing piece that's in the shop, that wasn't there either. And there's, there's a lot of players out there that do eat it up. just been really exciting seeing breeze in players hands and seeing the positive reception on it we've seen some cool plays that we hadn't seen internally we definitely want to see how it plays out once the the pro teams get their hands on it yeah to so just get a better sense of how the map gets played when teams are really trying to push the limits of it If you've been following along, we have one patch uh, that you may have seen the teleporter area change a bit. Um, keep an eye on it.